everyone. My name is Tiffany and this is my channel, Who's Your Handmade? Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today's video is episode four of my Sewing with Knits series. Today we're talking about fabric shopping, one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to get to know you better and welcome you into the sewing community. Now's a great time to subscribe. This Sewing with Knit series is near and dear to my heart. I love sewing with knit fabric and it's been so good to hear from you all about how this is inspiring you to sew more with knits as well. That was my end goal, to spread the love of sewing with knit fabric, to break down those myth barriers about how sewing with knit fabric is more difficult and you can't do it. Uh, the home sewers just can't get it done. Those are not true and I have spent uh, three episodes thus far talking about sewing with knit fabric. So I'll link all those down below. If you haven't caught any of those, it would be good to go back and catch up on those. They're, they're chock full of information. Everything that I have gleaned over the two, two and a half years that I've been sewing with knit, I know that might not seem like a lot, but you guys, I have sewn the majority of the time with knit fabric. I'm actually trying to get better at woven fabric. <laughs> so I love sewing with knit fabric. I sew it for myself. I'm wearing a garment right now with knit fabric. I sew it for my daughter. So I really am passionate about this. And so go check out those other videos if you have not done so already. Subscribe and follow this channel. Follow this series. I'm going to do a lot more on this series. I could talk for hours and hours about it. I also want to do some tutorials. I want to specifically show you guys neck bands and how I do my neck bands. Those were one of the most difficult parts of learning uh, to sew with knits for myself, but now I love to do them and they give you the confidence to try out knit projects. So that's all coming down the line. What are we talking about today? Today's video in particular is all about shopping. <laughs> we love to go fabric shopping or I love to go fabric shopping. I'm actually trying to keep myself from doing too much shopping, but it's hard. It's such a fun time to go to a fabric store and pick out beautiful fabrics. What I want to particularly focus in on today is taking a pattern, a knit pattern, and going shopping for that pattern. So several of you um, have sent questions in, sent frustration in, that you are having a hard time matching up pattern to fabric. So I'm not an expert. Again, this is my experience talking. So this is what I would do if I was to go fabric shopping for a particular pattern. I've picked out two patterns. These are patterns that you might not choose for yourself, but that's okay. Again, I'm picking from my experience what I would gravitate towards and fabrics that I would choose. So this is real life for me. This is what I would really do if I was heading to Joann's uh, to pick out my next project. Before we get into the shopping portion, which was so much fun to do, my daughter and I went to Joann's and took you guys along with us. But before we get into that, I just want to cover a few points about shopping with fabric. Now I am going to talk mostly about in-store fabric shopping today, specifically places like Joann Fabrics, Hobby Lobby. Also more specialty shops are out there like the University of Sewing that I love to go to in Bloomington. They have a lot of beautiful fabric. So I love to shop in store, but maybe you don't have the opportunity to go to a Joann's or a Hobby Lobby or your own specialty store. And that's okay. We're going to talk about a few online resources as well that I have personally used and loved and are a-okay in recommending to you guys in your knit journey. First, let's look at some tips for fabric shopping. And this could go for woven fabric, any kind of fabric. These tips you could use in your sewing journey. So let's check out what my tips when are. When you're fabric shopping, it can be a daunting task. It can seem like there are so many different kinds of fabrics out there. How will you ever find the right one? I can understand the daunting task. When I first started sewing, I didn't know that many fabric types. I mean, I could recognize 
organized, woven, and knit, but when you start talking about Ponty and Liverpool and Jersey and Double Brush Poly, like there are so many different kinds of knit fabrics. And then once you start deep diving, you realize that there's even more forms of Jersey. There's so many different kinds of jersey out there and it could depend on where you're shopping from and um, we're gonna see actually in the footage from joann's a couple different options of just jersey that within the same store so it can be very confusing also those suggested fabrics can be confusing on the pattern itself if you're picking up a big four pattern or even an indie pattern reading the information online the suggested fabrics can be very confusing Big four patterns are especially bad about this. They're kind of vague. And then they use terminology that we don't really use all the time in our sewing, our day-to-day -day sewing. Sometimes it'll just say cotton types. Now, what would you do with cotton types? That could be so many different kinds of fabrics, right? So it's really hard to know what to do. It's hard to know where to start. My first tip for this daunting task of picking out fabric is to picture what you want that garment to feel like when you're wearing it. So if you're picking out a knit dress, you probably want it to be flowy or drapey. You might want it to be a bodycon dress, so body um, hugging. You might want it to show off your curves. For a sweater, you might want it to be cuddly and soft and cozy. For a skirt, you might want something more structured and sturdy uh, that you could wear to work or you could wear into the office. And then for a top, a blouse, you might want something flowy and breathable and easy to wear for every day. Picture in your mind how you want that garment to feel like, what you would be most comfortable in, what your perfect scenario is. And then take that information to the fabric store and be touchy feely. <laughs> get up close and personal with that fabric, touch that fabric, let it drape, unfold uh, a couple yards off of the bolt if you need to, to see the drape of it and the way it's going to flow. Imagine it in a skirt or imagine it as a blouse hanging, you know, from your shoulders down. Imagine it as a long dress, whatever you want it to be. Is it flowing? Does it feel like you want it to feel? You're going to see in the footage of a uh, my daughter and I and Joanne's, I am hands on. I'm My hands are everywhere on that fabric, feeling it, stretching it, uh, moving it between my hands. Sometimes I'll move my hand behind the fabric to see how see-through it is because I don't want to be dealing with any kind of see-through fabric. So I really, really encourage you to get hands on with your fabric. Now, if you're an online shopper, you're saying, you know, that that's just not for me. How am I going to get my hands on this fabric? I mentioned in a previous uh, episode of this series to order fabric swatches. That is one of my biggest recommendations for you if you are an exclusive online shopper. Get a hold of that fabric store. See if they will do swatches for you. Most of them will. You might have to contact them, give them a call, send them an email, ask for the swatches because you learn so much by just seeing the fabric and feeling the fabric. You can order it online, you can buy yardage after yardage, and you can play the lottery, gamble with that kind of fabric. And that's okay to do if you want to buy those and kind of try out different kinds of fabrics. You can put it into your stash, you can make wearable muslins of it, but coming from a person who has done some of that, your stash will grow with those fabrics and you might not be drawn to actually use them because you don't like the way it actually feels. So if you're an online shopper, go after those swatches, but if you have access to a store, and, and let me just say right here, if you are not a super fan of Joann's and Hobby Lobby, that's okay. You do not have to buy any of the fabric that you go there and experience. I would still suggest going to those stores and becoming comfortable with the different kinds of fabrics. Now, jersey you buy from an online shop that you saw in Joann's, 
might not be the same. Their fabric content might not be the same, but you could get used to Jersey. You can kind of see what Jersey looks like. You can get comfortable with hearing that terminology, seeing it on the end of the bolt, and you can really start developing more knowledge about fabric types. That's how I have built, and I'm not an expert by any means, but I have been able to recognize a lot more fabric types just by going into Joann's and reading uh, the ends of the bolts and feeling the fabric and looking. So those are my two top tips for fabric shopping in the store, especially visualize what you want that garment to feel like, how you want it to drape and wear, and then take that information and be touchy feely in the store or with your swatches if you order them from online. And those have really, really helped me choose fabric and learn more about the types of fabric out there. So I'll, like I said, I've chosen two patterns to go shopping with. Let's talk about those real quick. I know there's some noise in my background, you guys. My air conditioner here in the camper turned on. So <laughs> sorry about that. But let's go through these two patterns real quick. I'm gonna show you the pattern, give you the suggested uh, fabric types, and then we're going shopping. So the first pattern that I have chosen is Simplicity 9717. I have a physical copy of this pattern somewhere up in my new house, packed away in boxes. So I don't have it here to show with me right now, but I'll pop up a picture here in the corner. This pattern features a lot of knit garments. I'm gonna look at it here on my screen as we talk about it. It's a knit top, cardigan, and skirt. I was specifically looking at the skirt for this, um, this pattern, but when I actually got into Joanne, I found a beautiful coordinating um, kind of fabric that would be great for the cardigan too. So when we turn this pattern over and look at the suggested fabrics, they are telling you uh, for A, C and D, interlock, jacquard, jersey, ITY, modal bamboo. So that's for the tops, A, C and D. And then for B, they also suggest double knit, ponte, terry, or rib knit. Ribnet's what is pictured on the beautiful uh, model there. That's what she's wearing. And Ribnet is really what I focused in on when we went shopping. I don't have a ton of experience with Joanne's Ribnet, so you'll see me kind of feeling different kinds. And I did find a few that would work really good with this. So I'll show you that when we go shopping. Uh, you're looking for a mid-weight knit with this. When I look at this skirt, I want something sturdy but yet not too heavy that's going to be too hot. I would wear this skirt probably year round, but it's looking very fallish, winterish to me, but I still don't wanna to be too bogged down with too heavy of a rib knit. I certainly do not want a slinky rib knit. That's not what I'm going for for this skirt. I don't want any underwear lines showing. I don't want my lumps and bumps showing. So I want a more sturdy rib knit. And again, I'm going to be touchy feely with this rib knit when, we're, when we go shopping. Moving on to the second pattern that I chose. And I do have that pattern copy here because I actually bought this one when we were shopping. This is new look. This is a new, a newer new look from this year, 2023. This is N6751 and I love this dress so much. I tell you, new look patterns, I love them. They don't have a very wide range of sizes. I went ahead and picked this one up. It's from 10 to 22. We'll see um, maybe if I can make this. But anyway, back to the fabric. When we're looking at fabric suggestions, this one's a little more vague. It says jersey knit, cotton knit. So think about how you would want this dress to drape. I would want something light. Um, it looks like it would be a perfect, a summer dress, so something light and breathable, maybe not too heavy on the polyester, and maybe something more natural for more breathable breathability. Uh, in Joann's, I had some, I had a hard time with this one because Joann's knit fabric section is so double brush poly heavy. They have so much double brush poly, and it's beautiful and it's tempting, but 
I would not suggest double brush poly for a dress like this. It's going to be too heavy, it's going to be hot, and it's going to weigh this dress down. So I was looking for a really nice jersey and I did find a couple so I'm excited to show those to you that um, and actually I bought some <laughs> of one of the ones that I'm going to show you. So you're definitely looking for a more lightweight knit that would drape well, would wear well in the summer. Okay, those are the two patterns that we're going to be shopping for. Let's go shopping. Okay guys, let's go shopping at Joann's. Got my little buddy with me, so here we go. Gotta get your cart, because you know you're going to fill it up. <laughs> the first thing that I would do is head to the pattern counter. I'm looking for my simplicity pattern now. S9717. There it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna find that pattern now in the pattern drawers. I have this pattern at home, so I picked one out just to show you guys. I didn't actually purchase that one that day. They weren't on sale. This is their new look wall. And I found the dress down there at the bottom. I did purchase this one. It's a beautiful pattern. Okay, we're ready to shop for fabric. This isn't my normal uh, Joann's. This was one up in Indy. It has a lot of fabric actually, lots of rows. So here I'm just kind of searching for the knit fabrics. really neat wall they had a lot of knit fabric along this wall I wish I would have had time to explore it a little more actually <laughs> and here is their knit aisle their main knit garment aisle lots of solids on this side so I am looking for the rib knit for this simplicity pattern there's the stretch guide at the bottom of the pattern packet if you want to use that Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This blue one was really pretty. It's about a mid-weight rib knit, I would say. It wasn't super heavy. Definitely not slinky. It's a good one. Looking for more options now. find this one but I, I really don't like that color <laughs> especially for a bottom uh, garment piece so many pretty knits uh, prints drawn to gray and I really end up liking this gray one and it's the one that I ended up choosing, actually. I'm going to show you the ends of the bolts, uh, just to give you an idea of what Joann's would call this. It's a rib knit. It's a uh, really nice quality. And that's what I would pair up for that skirt. Here in a second I show you another option as well, but that one is a really good one. I'm going on down the knit line here looking for um, some fabric for a cardigan. They had some beautiful fall knits here at the end. Man, I could have I could have filled the card up. <laughs> there were so many beautiful options. That's a really pretty rib knit there that I'm showing right now. It's got some rayon in it, so it was really kind of be and pretty. This was another really pretty one. It had a little more texture to it. Like it felt almost painted. It's really pretty. Rayon in it as well. But 
this one. You guys, it drew me in like a moth to a flame. That beautiful floral. Yeah, I bought some of this for myself. <laughs> this is the one that I end up thinking would be a pretty good cardigan. It is see-through. You can see my fingers I'm moving through it there. Um, but as a cardigan, it wouldn't be too big of a deal if it was see-through. Be a nice fall cardigan. So yeah, that was my choice. Okay, let's move on to the new look pattern. This one was a toughie. You're gonna see throughout this whole footage. I'm just feeling everything, reading the bolts, trying to figure out what to pair up with this. This says Jersey brushed for softness. Be not misled, my friends. This is double brush poly. Joanne's is trying to get sneaky. It's definitely double brush poly. Actually, like most of this is. It's kind of disappointing. I, <laughs> I'm not a super fan of the double brush poly. And it certainly was not what I was looking for for this new look dress. But I have to pet it anyway. <laughs> Double Rush Polly, beautiful. Leave it there. Moving on. Here's my little helper. She was in charge of the notebook. Taking it apart is more accurate. Again, just looking through all these beautiful knits. This one was a, um, a viable option, but here in a second I'll show you why I did not choose this one. It is an actual jersey. Really loved the feel of it, but look, no rolling, no rolling of the edges, but look. <laughs> yeah, no way too see-through, way too thin, unfortunate. Just moving on down the line, feeling all the Dove Brush Poly. It's all Dove Brush Poly, you guys. <laughs> This one I really loved. Again, we're gonna see it in just a second. It's gonna say Jersey Brush for Softness. Double Brush Poly. If you read the fine print on the label, it will say DBP. It's Double Brush Poly. Being tricky. Not gonna work. I've got a fine two at the end here that are the options that I'm gonna choose, and then I'm gonna find another one on another aisle. So. This one right here, again, it says the Jersey Knit Brush for Softness, but it does not say Double Brush Poly. It did not feel as um, as like the other Double Brush Polys. Notice the curling edges. That's giving me more Jersey feel, and I would have chosen that one probably if I was doing some kind of, you know, fun, loud kind of print. I'm finding my favorite next. Here we go. This, this is the one. <laughs> I wish I had bought some of this fabric, you guys. It was so, so beautiful. As soon as I touched it, I knew that this was the one for this dress. I might have to go back and get me some more. It is $20 a yard. It's tinsel, modal, jersey, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. The weight of it was beautiful. Look at those edges. No curling. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, you can see I'm happy with it. <laughs> Very happy. I, I regret not buying it. It's beautiful. It would have made a gorgeous dress. Expensive, but, but beautiful. This is the quality. This is the higher quality stuff at Joanne's, you guys. This is another great option I found on another aisle after I had found that brown one. I do love this. I actually bought some of this for Addy. Um, it's beautiful jersey knit. I'm going to show you the label here in just a second. There we go. It's from the Pop line, that juvenile line, but they make such beautiful prints. 
it's it's gorgeous it also would have made a beautiful new look dress should have bought some for myself probably <laughs> it does have some curling down at the edges um, as a lot of jersey will on the selvage line there but the stretch was beautiful the quality was beautiful yeah I'm impressed I'm <laughs> can't stop touching it it's 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 really great definitely I'm recommending it for that dress and a little hand stealing my pattern <laughs> and then here's that last rib knit that I found in the athleisure section it's also pretty expensive it's twenty dollars a yard before sales but it was nice like it was really good feeling rib knit and here's my cart Here's what I picked out for this Joanne's shopping trip and my little cutie. So that was my shopping trip. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that and got something out of it. Again, that's just my process. That's how I would be doing uh, my fabric shopping and pairing it up with fabrics. Be touchy-feely. Don't be afraid to get out there and experience that fabric for yourself. Uh, so let's talk about some online shops that I would suggest if you don't have access to an in-store experience. I have three that I want to highlight to you really quick. The first one is Fabric Mart Fabrics. They are an excellent uh, online shop. They have so many different kinds of fabrics. I have had a great experience with their knit fabrics in particular. They also do some really good deals. Their fabric is very reasonably priced. Sign up for their emails. I will link all of these shops down below. Sign up for their emails. If you have a need for some knit fabric, they will do lots of discounts off as well as really great prices on shipping. Uh, $4.99 shipping and $1.99 shipping is sometimes some of the sales that they'll run. So Fabric Mart Fabrics is a great option. Another one that I've come to love is Olga's Closet. They have really high quality knit fabrics at very reasonable prices. She will have a huge clearance section almost year round. She has a lot of things in the clearance section. I bought from there and had great luck and I've also bought some of their exclusive prints which are also really high quality. I actually made Addie's Christmas jammies from some of those last year and they have held up she still wears them to this day like she is wearing them this week <laughs> they do not fade they don't pill they are very high quality so olga's closet is another one you want to sign up for their emails if you have a need for knit fabric they will run coupon um, sales they'll give you a coupon code and and such so sign up for their emails if you haven't and the last one last but certainly not least is becoming a new favorite of mine millie may fabrics is a wonderful knit fabric resource. They have excellent um, knit fabrics. I have loved every single piece that I have received from Millie Mae and that's that's saying a lot. <laughs> every single order has beautiful fabrics in it. She has great reasonable prices as well. Reasonable shipping. She'll do some clearance sections throughout the year and then at Christmas time she has a giant clearance event. So again sign up for these emails. Be, uh, be vigilant when you're looking for sales if you're trying to shop savvy. I love these three um, resources for online fabric shopping. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know down in the comment section below if you're enjoying this series. Let me know if you have any questions about knit fabric, sewing with knit fabric. If I can't answer your questions, maybe someone from this very talented sewing community can. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Thank you so much for taking some of your time to spend it with me today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>